everybody what's going on it's Mac here welcome back to another new video uh, today we're gonna be trying to extend the bash script that I uh, worked on in my last video uh, so if you didn't see that video there'll be a card uh, linked up at the top but it's also not actually super necessary kind of the basic idea is that uh, I, I wanted to try to create a script that I could run on any new Mac that I uh, interact with uh, that I plan on using for any kind of extended period of time that will kind of set things up for me so I can just kind of push one button and go about my business and then a little while things will all kind of be set up for me and and this started with just finding a way to uh, install all the apps that I use via the command line and then putting them into a uh, handy little script. Uh, but then I realized that there were also a lot of like system preferences and things that could be changed via the command line. Uh, and so now I'm just trying to work on this script to make it as robust as possible uh, and hopefully at some point just be kind of a one-click solution to set up uh, you know any OS X uh, Mac OS system uh, the way that I like it within hopefully just a few minutes. So obviously this is just kind of a work in progress, but I do think I've actually gotten far enough along in the process that there's actually something kind of interesting to look at. So we're just going to try to go through and uh, build this script. Uh, I'm in my uh, home directory here. And of course you can uh, do a PWD to see exactly where you are on your computer and then LS to list the files. Those are kind of two handy commands if you're not familiar with them. I'm going to create this script in the home directory uh, and that's just going to be user slash whatever your username is. And I'm just storing it here because it's super easy to run it straight from the command line uh, once you have it set up. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and just create a new file here. Uh, we'll use the touch program for that. So you would type in touch and then the name of whatever you want your file to be. I'm just going to call this like Mac setup and you can give it a file extension if you want to. I'm going to not um, just because if we don't give it a file extension, it'll work either way. Uh, and whenever we end up making this script executable a little later on, uh, we can just double click to run it and we don't actually have to run it from the command line if we don't want to do it that way. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and do that. And you know what, actually we'll just work uh, kind of outside of the command line for the first little bit here. So you can see I've got a new uh, file here. It's called uh, Mac Setup. And I'm going to just right click and we'll open this up and uh, add them to work. So here's our uh, new, fresh new script that we're going to be writing. Uh, let me see if I can make the uh, text size a bit bigger here in Adam. So at the beginning of any of these kind of scripts, uh, the first thing that you need to do is just tell the script where to find the program that you want to use to run it. Uh, which in this case is just going to be locating the bash program. Uh, so kind of the most universal way to write this out is a, a hashtag exclamation point uh, slash USR slash bin slash env uh, slash bash. It's a lot of ways to write out this command. You can check out the last video uh, that'll be up in the card if you're interested in more info about that. But for our purposes, just write it just like this and it should run on any Mac you run it on. And then from this point on, our script is going to basically have four stages. First off, we're going to update some system preferences. And so that's going to consist of, first of all, just uh, listing the terminal commands to change those preferences. And then we're also going to have to uh, restart uh, the affected apps in order to get them to work. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's affected, not affected. Uh, and then we're going to install apps. To do that, we're going to first off use Homebrew just to install kind of the basic apps and command line stuff. And then we're going to use casks to install more kind of mainstream apps. Uh, and then we're also going to use a command line replacement for the Mac App Store to install pretty much all of the other apps that you can't get via casks, or at least in my case. Uh, and then that is actually it. I organized this weird. All right, so up here right at the top, I want to set up a few variables. I'm going to do uh, brew equals and then open and close uh, parentheses. Uh, and then we'll do mas equals open and close parentheses, and then we'll also do casks equals open and close parentheses. Uh, we're setting these up because these three variables are going to kind of control our three installers that we want to use. Uh, again, this whole bottom section is just installing apps, and we're installing them from three different locations, uh, the Mac App Store, Homebrew, and then uh, the Casks add-on for Homebrew. In all three cases, we're going to have at least more than one app that we want to list here, and this is going to make that whole process easier. Um, so we'll go ahead and type these, and then I'm just going to skip them and come back a little bit later because I want to go ahead and mess with our system preferences. 
So first thing we'll do, of course, is list all of the commands that we want to use. I was previously keeping them in a notes document because, again, there were a whole bunch of commands that I use fairly regularly. And I just kind of keep track of them. Uh, so I'll try to maybe go over what they do pretty quickly, I guess. Um, this one up here, this first one is going to disable the shadow that you get, the drop shadow that you get on some screenshots. Uh, this one here will change the default screenshot to file format to JPEG. Uh, this one here, I don't actually remember. Uh, we've got one to disable uh, animations in mail. Uh, we have one to disable that weird functionality where every time you try to save something, it will try to force you to save it in iCloud. We've got a couple other ones here. This is an interesting one. It will um, remove the auto hide uh, kind of time on delay on the dock, um, which that's super annoying. So Good to get rid of that. Oh, this one's a fun one. This uh, here uh, will enable that kind of power chime that you get on iOS whenever you plug in your phone to charge. I don't know if you're going to be able to hear this, but I'll do it anyways. Whenever I uh, plug and unplug my Mac now from charging, I, I get that same noise, you know, notification, which is handy. Uh, and then this one down here next to last, very, very important. If you're going to copy one, when this changes the default uh, update uh, frequency to one day. Uh, I don't know if it's actually still true, but at least in some earlier versions of OS X, the Mac App Store would only check for updates once every like seven days or something. So this will make sure it checks every day for updates. And now we've got all of those commands listed uh, and we just need to restart whatever apps are going to be affected by all these changes. So in this case, uh, it's going to be like the dock. So we can do kill all dock and that will restart the dock. Uh, it's also going to affect the finder. There's at least one command in here. I'm not sure which one. And then we also have to restart uh, system UI server. And of course you could always just restart your whole system after you make these kind of changes, but it's also just totally not necessary. You can just do a few little commands here to fix that for you. So, and now we can set up our systems to install all the apps that we want to use. The first thing, of course, that we have to do is actually just install Homebrew. It's not installed by default. Um, so we actually, before we can even use the command to install Homebrew, we have to make sure that we have the Xcode tools enabled. Um, you don't have to install Xcode, the actual app. You can just install the, the command line tools. Uh, so to do that, we'll do Xcode dash select space dash install, and this will install the Xcode command line tools. And then once we have that installed, we can go ahead and install Homebrew with a little script that you can get from the website in the description, uh, brew.sh. That is exactly what it looks like right there. And the script is right on the homepage. And then all we have left to do is actually set up a little bit here to reference this variable that we set up. So the reason that we have any of these variables set up is because as soon as I have Homebrew installed, there's a few things that I almost always install. Um, so I would immediately install like cask, then that'll allow me to use casks. Uh, and also MAS, this is the Mac App Store command line replacement. I would install, you know, Emacs or well, I would install Vim. I would install like Nano, Git, a few other things. And the way that this works is you go into the command line and you would type brew install name of the app. And it's super easy, super, super handy. But when you get a whole bunch of these, it can be kind of a headache. Uh, and so the whole goal here is automation. And so by setting up this variable, we make entering several different uh, apps that we want to install a whole lot easier. And there are like a ton of these apps that we want to install. I install virtually everything via the command line now. So typing it out line by line is like not even close to something I want to do. So we set up this variable. And then if we come down here below homebrew, we're going to type in that line of code that we, we would usually to use to install apps. So brew install. And then rather than typing out the name of an app, we just have to reference this variable. And we do that by saying dollar sign uh, squiggly bracket. Uh, and then inside of that, we'll type the name of the variable. So in this case, it's brew. And open and close the uh, square brackets. And inside of that, you want to put the at sign. And so now whatever ends up in this variable is what's going to be fed to this line of code. So when we type out brew install, you know, and then this gibberish to reference the command up here, what we're really saying is brew install cask, brew install vim, brew install nano, get YouTube, uh, download or go on, uh, you know, until we get all the apps installed. Uh, so that's actually exactly how uh, the process works for casks and our Mac app store replacement.
So we would do brew cask install. This is how we install any of our casks. And then we'll reference the cask that we set up. Uh, so we'll do the dollar sign, squiggly bracket, type in cask, or do we call it cask? Casks, plural. Uh, and then square bracket, at sign. And we'll do the same thing for the uh, Mac app store replacement. In this case, we just do MAS install. It works just a little bit differently than the other two, uh, but then we add the variable onto the end and it'll all work out in the end. So at this point, our little script is actually basically done. All we need to do is fill out uh, actually our lists of apps that we want to install. So casks are super easy. You know, you would just do brew cask install and then the name of an app. And there's a ton of these apps. If I just do a list command here really quickly, you can see these are just the apps that I have installed. It's everything from like Dropbox to Cinebench. Uh, we've got VirtualBox, Spotify, 1Password, Alfred, uh, you know, just all sorts of really, really handy, nice apps. And so the way that I like to do this is I'll just make my terminal window kind of small so that everything will print on one line. And then I'll type in brew cask list and this will list every single app that i have installed via cask and then we could go ahead and paste those in and now we're going to be installing all of those apps in our script without having to write out anything uh, you can also do the same thing i believe with homebrew you could do brew list and it will list everything that you have installed via just homebrew. And then we might be able to do the same thing with our Mac App Store replacement here. Oh, awesome. Yeah, it has a replacement too. Cool. So I did actually want to talk about this, this Mac App Store command line replacement because I feel like it's not as well known as homebrew or CAS. I actually only recently even found out that it was a thing. So the way that it works is a bit odd. It will allow you to install any app that actually is in the Mac App Store. So I could find anything from just like random free apps like Lightroom uh, to I could install Final Cut and you would do it via the command line just because it so, kind of sort of handles updates a little bit better than the Mac App Store does and also just makes it easier in a situation like this where we're doing a batch installer to try to save time. Uh, now the way that it works is a little bit odd because if we do like MAS install and then we'll type in the name of an app uh, we'll do Slugline. This is a great little screenwriting app that I use a lot. Uh, we get an error uh, because we actually have to use this random app ID to install apps. We can't just use the name of an app. So there's a few different ways to get a hold of this. If you search for any app that you want, um, so this is that same app that we were just looking at, you can actually uh, copy the link to the app. And then if you were to paste it into a browser, you would be able to kind of dissect the link and find the ID right up here. Uh, you know, I'll just say ID and then a whole bunch of numbers. Uh, and that's one way to do it. But also if you're already in your uh, terminal, you could just type MAS search and then the name of an app and it'll always pull up the app ID along with the version and the app name. So it's, it's a little funky, but basically the idea is you need to get a hold of these app ID numbers rather than just the name of the app. Uh, so the way that I like to do this is I'll type out the app ID. I'll say, you know, let's say that's the app ID. Uh, and then I'll do a comment here, which you can do by just doing a hashtag. And then I'll type in the name of the app below it just so that I can make sure that I'm kind of keeping track of things in my uh, script here whenever I come back to edit it. Um, so I'll list all of those. And then we have a script that will install homebrew apps, casks, and anything else that we use that lives in the Mac App Store. Uh, it's also going to make a whole bunch of changes to system preferences and that type of thing. Uh, so this should work out really, really well for us. We have one last step here, and that is to make this uh, script executable. So we'll hop back over into the terminal, and all we have to do is use a program called chmod. And in order to use this, you type in, you know, chmod, uh, you add plus x, here and this will tell the program that we're trying to make an executable file and then you'll type in the name of the app. Uh, here's another kind of terminal tip if you don't know. Uh, if you start to type something, as long as you're in the right directory, uh, you can kind of hit tab and it will autofill as soon as it knows what you're doing. So if you look over here, uh, as soon as I hit enter, we should get an executable file forming. There it is. And now all we have to do is double click on this and we get a little bit of a mess because it restarted all of the finder and the dock and everything. I actually didn't know that was gonna happen, but let's if we track down the actual terminal window that we were using, oh boy, we've made a real mess here. Wow, that did not end well at all. Uh, but anyways, this is the terminal window. You can see 
what it's doing here. It's running this Mac setup app and we've just gotten to the point where it's telling us, hey, this is gonna install Homebrew and asking us if that's okay. So our script is working. It's pretty easy to set up and I think this is a pretty good setup uh, because it's very flexible and will hopefully automate the process of setting up a new Mac and make that a whole lot more painless and easy and fun and you know, what it should be. Uh, so that is it for this video. Uh, thank you everyone for checking it out and I will see you in the next one.